Ladies and gentlemen, I have a distinct honor and privilege to welcome Miss Christy Van to the show. Fantastic. Christy, how are you doing today? I couldn't be better. Thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate this. Well, thank you for accepting the invite. I've learned that it's one thing to invite. It's something totally different to have someone actually accept the invitation. So I'm excited about our time. I'm very glad. Thank you. Thank you so much because I I really love hearing about what you do. Well, I, I appreciate that. So let's jump in um, because here's what I do know. I know that great people are focused on productivity. They're focused on giving to others and, and not so much as listening to ourselves, but to give something so that others can be better. And I think that permeates everything you do. Um, so I am a fan, a follower, a subscriber. Um, but for those who don't know who Christy Van is and they are, haven't been exposed to the fantastic universe, who is Christy Van and what is fantastic? Christy Van, she is like somebody that is just like everybody else out there looking for answers in the world. Uh, I happened up on a concept. It's a foreign concept to American finance. So literally fantastic just came out of absolutely nowhere. Um, I, I loved my husband. I love my husband and his name is Van. So when we got together, um, I was like, this is just fantastic. <laughs> so that's how it started. Uh, I ended up that that ended up being my handle on Peloton as well. And then when I started this channel, I was like, what am I going to name it? And I'm like, fantastic, because when people learn what the concept brings to their life, it's it's going to make it fantastic. So that's where fantastic comes from. Awesome. So so this foreign concept to U.S. banking and, and just finances, we're talking about velocity banking. Uh, and while we aren't going to dive in to that here, it is something that I know has revolutionized people's lives and how they think about finances and money. Um, so how did you get exposed to this idea, this concept of velocity banking? Wow. So I was coming out of a horrific marriage. Um, I had been really just smothered in, I'm not even sure, mental illness or something, I don't know, but I was in a really bad relationship and I decided I was going to get out and the only way to get out was to run. So when I got away, I sent divorce papers and the way I did it was I took every debt that we had because I didn't want, I knew he wouldn't sign off on anything less. So no child support, no nothing. I just took all the debt and ran with it. So when I realized that I was really in a, a bind because I only made $500 a week at that time, uh, had no other options for money. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, literally just heard about velocity banking through a video one day uh, while I was driving heard the the video about you know credit card payments disappearing and i was like what and so i just started diving into it from there and literally within eight months i was completely financially free and very excited you know to live and be in control of my finances Okay, so a couple of things that you already said. One, that you made a decision, right? You had gotten to this point oh, yeah. in life where you had to decide. Uh, but then I heard you mention that once you got exposed to this idea, this concept, as you're driving, listening to this video, you said, hold on, let me see. And so you investigated, but then you dove in. Uh, so what is it about Christy that makes her one decisive and then once you get a hold of something that you're willing to experiment because i know myself i'm guilty of wanting to decide but then being on the fence but then also saying i've tasted i've tested but i haven't fully jumped in so what makes you i'm going to say different in that uh, regard well i'm going to preface that with i had been praying for solutions because on, I, had, let's go. I had been in a very, very bad marriage it, that was very desperate in that situation. And I was praying for a way out. Uh, I felt like that even though I had to run, it still was better than where I was sitting, spinning my wheels. 
Um, so as the prayers started unfolding, I started finding Bible verses uh, where that we um, we just seek first the kingdom and he's going to add all this stuff to us. OK, so I never once I got a hold of the spiritual side of what was going on, I never went back. Even today, I still repeat these verses to myself that my God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I don't have anything to worry about. I'm going to be provided for. God is my source, not my job. So when you realize that your giving completely controls your income, give more. <laughs> it just keeps flowing. It just keeps so flowing. So right here, this is where I want to jump in because I get excited, right? So everything that you do, um, it has that um, faith element woven into it from little subtle things. But then we hear this, um, but then we know that in the culture that we're in, in this environment, it's, well, she's saying that because she's on the other side and she's able to give and she's receiving mm -hmm. right now this abundance. Um, but you made this decision early on where oh, yeah. you said, this is who I am. And right. that's the reason why you're blessed. You're not um, who you are because you're blessed. No. You're blessed because of who you are and whose you are, correct? Exactly. I remember when this happened. I remember I was in my office at the time. It wasn't my office. I just was a secretary. And uh, I was listening to a minister talking about these Bible verses. Well, I've been raised in the church and I never had heard this before. It never, I was like, what? what does that mean use your faith i was like i thought faith got you to heaven i had no idea that it was working with you, you here on earth right. so i was like wow okay uh so you know i heard one of them say um we will get a job we'll get a job and we'll work for two weeks based on the promise that we're going to get paid we don't get the money up front we have to work in advance so we take the word of a man and he tells us, hey, you work 40 hours, you work 80 hours, we're going to give you a check. But when God tells us, I've got your back, I know when the sparrow falls, so I know how many hairs you have on your head, I'm going to take care of you. That was like, wow, that was like, okay, I, all I need to do is focus on getting better, bettering myself. And it was like it all just came together right there. So so now we, being believers, we have this thing and why we do it. Um, and so now as you're talking about your journey and how you started and how you sought answers from the source, um, yeah. something that I want to just pivot to quickly uh, is that I know if I'm watching Christy Van and Fantastic now, I'm seeing everything you're doing in what many would consider a very short term, right? Overnight. Right. Um, so I'm going to say, well, Christy has faith. Yes. Um, she had some dire circumstances that maybe forced her to do something different, but yeah. she probably also has the education. She had a background in finance or something that would help her. Um, would I be accurate in saying that everything came together perfectly for you? No, I am a certified welding inspector. So I love steel. All I do is look at welds. Absolutely love that position, but that position didn't come until after I had the revelation that um, I didn't have to live at a secretary's job. Okay. So all of this was unfolding and I have no college education. I attended for the first year and didn't even finish the first year of college because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know. I hated high school, the purple passion. I hated school in general because I'm just not somebody that likes to sit and study like that. I'm a hands-on person. So no, none of it, you know, every bit of this started with learning about giving and i can't express that enough and people who don't understand they don't believe just because they don't understand it's not you know the the bible tells us in genesis that since the world began there has been seed time and harvest so if you're planting seeds whatever seeds that is uh, you're going to get it back multiplied and that doesn't mean just money. That doesn't mean, uh, you know, love. That means bad attitudes. That means 
everything that you're planting is coming back. Uh, that's when the revelation came to me about where Jesus said, do unto others as you would have done to you. Well, I was like, oh gosh, that's so stressful. Who wants to be good to people all the time? But it's not about that. It's about do unto others because whatever you're doing to them is coming back to you. So that changes your whole thought process. It's like, uh, wait a minute. Uh, I don't want to be mean because that's going to come back on me. So when I got to looking at Bible verses the way I feel they're supposed to be read instead of, you know, like commands, you know, do this because this is the way you would want to be treated. You know, it kind of gives us a realistic view of, wow, we are actually in some sort of control here to what happens with our lives. Now, you say that we're in some sort of control, and so I love this about Christy Van. She is a no-excuses person, right? No matter the circumstances that you find yourself in, no matter what the economy is doing or right. the financial situation you're in or even relationally, right? Um, so what do you say to someone who has been on the sideline, who has sat here in their corner with their arms folded and just frustrated with God, with their um, spouse or significant other, with their employer and said, well, I'm doing everything I can. What would you say to them to maybe get them off of the sideline and actually get them into this game of controlling and deciding what their future looks like? Well, when I heard the proverb, I think it's a Chinese proverb, and it said, when the student is ready, the teacher will arrive. That didn't make any sense to me until I realized I was the one sitting back waiting. I waited for a decade or two on my first husband to grow up and to act like somebody, okay, and to be nice to me and to love me. And I sat back waiting, 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 wasted my uh, 20s into my 30s waiting just mad why isn't god fixing this why isn't god changing his will towards me well god doesn't change wills that's why we have free will so if i could have gotten people out of the mindset of you can make that man or that woman love you please stop that you're wasting your time <laughs> so to me it was i had to go through my own self-help I started, I started working on who Christy was. Uh, why does she have these bad attitudes about this or that? Why does she need to be loved by that person? So when I got to studying who I was and got to realizing who I am in Christ, totally two different people because I was insecure, uh, no confidence whatsoever, uh, just thought I was going to be a secretary all of my life to... Uh, I can walk into a crowd right now and speak to them if I needed to. And it's not because I'm confident. It's because I know who I am. And nobody out here on this earth, from your very richest to your very poorest, is any better or less than I am. We are all on the same playing field. What are you going to do with your life? What decisions are you going to make? to make your life better. You have control. The Bible says that our tongue is like a rudder, a small rudder on a ship. And if our tongue is saying negative stuff about ourselves, we're going to stay down. If our tongue is declaring the word of the Lord over our lives, we have no choice but to look up because the skies are blue because the Father who controls everything has given us the power to control our lives and what's going on around us and who we're going to become, what we're going to do. And I don't think that, I know I wasn't as a kid given that option. I just thought, oh, well, I'm going to be a housewife and I'm going to be a secretary. I didn't realize I had more options. So I feel like that, you know, if I die tomorrow, I'm fulfilled because I have literally climbed the ladder to find who I am. You know, this isn't about you and me. This is about me. I'm the one going to face God with myself. So I want to know that I have been serving as he's put us down here to serve. Because when we serve, he repays what we're doing. Like he says, if you give to the poor, you have lent to him and he always repays. So when you, you have to know the word in general to even know how it applies to you, right? 
Absolutely. So, so Christy, let me ask you this. So you mentioned uh, much like me, right? I grew up in the church. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we heard the word, we were read the Bible verses, but then maybe our understanding of scripture and wealth, scripture and mm -hmm. abundance, scripture and who we are identity. It is different because I grew up in the in a southern church in Alabama, right? And so it was often where well, here's what the godly, the holy, the believers look like, sound like. This is what they drive. They're meek. And I believe that right. we took meekness and turned it into weakness. Yes. Okay. Um, but when I hear everything that you do and the way you're communicating to your audience, your view viewers, your clients and customers, it's almost as if you really are putting the fire under them, not just to be successful and to get out of debt and to change their lot in life, but mm -hmm. also so that they can be an inspiration to others. It, it yeah. does, how much of what you talked about sowing those seeds in good soil and sowing the right side, right type of seed, how much of that drives you to do what you do on a daily basis? It's all about serving. If we're not giving, if we're not serving, then we're not fulfilled. We're not doing what we were put down here on this earth to do. So every single time I work with one person one-on-one -on -one, or whether it be in a group, I give them the direct attention that I would want if I were wanting answers to my own finances. So I always keep that in the back of my mind that these people are who I was just a few years ago right i mean and if i could implant what has happened in my life and my mind so they could see the process um i would because to sit and tell somebody well it started with my giving they're like okay now can you tell me what to do with my finances is that the typical response you get right because it sounds pie in the sky right you say hey let's start here and they were like no 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 fast forward you said no it starts here okay but what after that so is that what you see a lot of times is that one of the first barriers you have to overcome with people yeah i have to be very careful with that because people don't want to hear spiritual they want to see the physical the physical is they're loaded with debt okay that's the physical the spiritual is you've got a father who's willing to help you. You just have to, we have to act to make him react. He's not going to just endow us with gifts because, you know, we're here. He wants to see action, I feel like. So when he, with your giving, you're planting, you're planting. And I'm going to tell you when the YouTube channel broke loose, I will never, ever forget that day because I had declared in my spirit, didn't even tell my husband. I was just like, I'm going to bring my tithing up ridiculously. And so, so you were going to bring your tithing to a place, to an aspirational place, not just to what you're, to the percentage of what you were currently making. Right. You decided once again, I'm going to bring my tithing up to this amount and then as a reaction, mm -hmm. come on, girl. Listen, I increased it so much. I thought I was crazy because <laughs> I was like, I took it up four times to what I had to. Okay. I had to, I was already doing more than 10%. Uh -huh. So I took it up. Like I said, I over tripled it. I can't even remember like exactly what it came to be, but it was that week. Okay, I just made the first, you know, I'd been at church Sunday, I'd gone on vacation Monday. When I declared to the Lord, you know, hey, I'm going to bring my tithing up and I'm putting it in your hands because I want the YouTube channel to do well. That next day, I was in Myrtle Beach and all of a sudden I started getting all these notices and, you know, TikTok was going crazy. YouTube, you know, just, it was just crazy. And I told my husband, I said, I feel like I need to go on TikTok and talk to these people because they're swarms, they're swarming right now. And so I did, I went on, I talked to YouTube and TikTok. I went from 10,000 that day to 60,000 subscribers. That week, I mean, was crazy. 
Now, everybody can say, oh, that's just a coincidence. You know, that had nothing to do with you triple a dick in your tithe. It absolutely had everything to do with that. And so I can still, if I see, okay, I'm having a down area on this side or that side. If I, you know, if you, if you plant the seed of what you're wanting, that's why goals are so important. We have to have a vision for our lives and what we're going to do. And that means day to day. What are you going to do today? What's your goal for today? Well, my goal was to reach as many people as I could reach with this word of getting out of debt. And I knew that I had to have more subscribers. So I went from 10 to 60 to 100,000. I think that was in within 10 months. Now we're at 200 and almost 50,000. And it hasn't even been, what, um, six or seven months now? So that's what I'm saying is I feel like that the Lord blesses what you, you have goals set and what you're willing to give for that. Okay. And it's all about serving. It's all, if we would focus on serving people and giving people what they need, uh, Zig Ziglar used to say, if you give enough people what they need, you'll have more than enough of what you need. And it's the truth. Absolutely. 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 So Christy, here's what I want to ask you, right? Because it could have been easy for you to say, Hey, this velocity banking worked for me. I'm in a good place. Let me just focus on me. I'm like, this world right here is good. But you went out and you started to do the work to bring others, to bring them along the journey to improve their lives. And the way you typically did that, primarily did that, was through YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I just want to ask you, did you have a background in video, in sharing, in finance? Uh, and if not, because many viewers are going to say, well, it worked for her, but she probably was trained. She had some type of pressure presentation skills. Um, I am afraid. I'm nervous. I wouldn't know what to say. Or the big one, I don't know if anyone would listen to me. So your decision to help others and then to jump on this YouTube platform and TikTok and social, um, did you have any fears, any challenges, concerns um, that, that you experienced early on? I had nothing. I had no education in finance. I didn't even like math. I flunked <laughs> algebra my first, I'll never forget that first semester. I flunked algebra and I had to retake that. Oh, I hated it so bad. So I had nothing. I didn't have anything but my iPhone. And if it hadn't been that I met Alex Elberin and he, he told me how to use the iPhone to record yourself, I would have had no idea. I had no idea what YouTube was or how it worked. So we're talking in February of 2023. This is just a little over a year ago. I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew that I had a drive in me from 10 years before that told me, you have to tell people about this because I knew no one around me was doing it and everybody is hurting for money. So I just had this drive that I have to let people know. And it never occurred to me to do YouTube. It's so funny. It wasn't even, I was like, you're ridiculous. When Alex said that, I'm like, that's not happening. I'm not doing that because I don't like to be in front of people. I don't like <clears throat> to do videos. I still don't like shooting videos, but I feel like that it's something that I have to do because people have scenarios they need to see so that they can work it out in their mind how to do it. So that's what makes me do those boards. And now I work one-on-one -on -one with people and I record a lot of their stuff so I can use that on the channel. But everybody has a different situation. And when I started doing the videos, I just started on what helped me at the very beginning, you know? And if you'll notice, if you've gone all the way back, they're pretty pathetic, pretty pathetic. <laughs> Uh, and I started with a little baby board, right? So, uh, they're so bad though. I want to take them off, but I'm like, I want people to see how uneducated I was at starting this, uh, because I didn't know anything. I really didn't. And now, you know, as I've progressed, um, still teaching the basics, you know, it's just that more people are hearing about it and they're so grateful. They're so thankful. 
So I want to tell you, I'm, I'm grateful for the fact that you keep the videos up, right? Because I know I'm guilty of going back and looking at my stuff and wanting to hit that um, unlisted button or to hit that <laughs> delete button and really right. get rid of it. Right. Uh, but then I think that it says something a lot about you and your character, uh, where even through the inspiration of this is where I started. Right. Um, so I was not polished. And so what I love for people to hear uh, is that we're talking 2023. We're not talking about 2000. Right. We're not talking about 2010. We're talking about 2023 when you said, hey, here's something that I have to do is bigger than me. Mm -hmm. um, and so really quickly, if you could just talk about um, having the influences that you have in your life. For instance, I know one, you received the idea from a video and then you right. get connected with someone who possibly saw something more in you and an avenue that you didn't see in yourself. And I'm sure that now you're on the other side of that, where you're in a position where you can see a lot in other people and see a better future for them that maybe they think, Christy, it's impossible. And you're sitting here and saying, no, if there ever was a case for impossible, it would be right here. Um, but our God does not know impossible. Right. Um, so could you just talk about the influences that you have um, that might have spurred you on when you looked around and said, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if that's possible. And even as you mentioned on a daily basis where you're like, I have to decide to record these videos because it's bigger than me. Right. So um, I just want to say, first off, I had no influence around me, no family, no friends, nobody, nobody was for me doing anything outside of being a secretary. OK, um, so me as a woman, when I stepped into the CWI, which is certified welding inspector, that's my trade. OK, I love steel. And that is just where I'm comfortable is looking at those welds that wasn't even acceptable growing up you know you don't need to be on a construction site with men or you don't need to be you know in a refinery or whatever so i've always tried to step outside of the box even though it makes people mad it makes your family very mad at you i mean i can make a list here so i feel like that we're individuals and if we're so busy following the masses and what everybody wants us to do, we're not going to find the individuality. Did I say that right? That, you know, God has put us down here to express. And so the influences as a kid into my adult life, even when I started the YouTube channel, I literally had people around me saying, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to help people? And I'm like, why wouldn't you, you know? So I was discouraged, but my husband, this husband I have now is very encouraging. He is the only one that has been behind me 9,000% saying, oh, no. all it takes is one. If it's, if it's the right one, right? And I have three daughters and, you know, kids, uh, two of them are adults, but they don't really sit and you know, encourage you or anything. They're living their lives. So it was just so weird. You know, if it hadn't been for my husband being the one that was like, oh, you can do this, you know, you, oh yeah, I think you can do this, you know, all the time, every day, I probably would have still done it, but just having that backbone behind you, you know, kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, and I would tell him, I feel really stupid doing this. But as I came in, like I mentioned, Alex, he had mentioned, you know, you need to do the videos. The first video I ever saw with Velocity Banking was uh, Matt Pilmore, who is in Colorado, who is now a very close confidant of mine. Uh, very glad I connected with him, but I just met him like I think I started with him like four or five months ago. So I had known him for 10 years through his videos but then finally got to meet him. So that was exciting. And he only had one video that I watched that he had on Velocity Banking. So it was just a God thing that that popped up that day for me to hear it. Uh, but he changed my life with that. Uh, then Alex is kind of the one that encouraged me to move ahead and, you know, just start making videos. And that's what he would say. You just got to start. You just got to start. So I had to step away from my corporate job who was with my family. So you can only imagine 
what I went through when it was time to break loose. But the Lord, you know, he laid all that out, sent somebody to replace me. And I was able to jump out head first because I had no money coming in here. But I was so financially set that I wasn't concerned about, you know, having six months with no pay, I guess. So when I came into the YouTube side, I just got busy. I just started making videos. I started posting them. They look so stupid. And I'm like, they're, I'm doing it anyway. I don't know. I, I just say it's the favor of the Lord because I don't know why the people are just all over the channel, why they enjoy it so much. Uh, I just want to help them. I want people to know that I feel um, the struggle because I've been there and I know how depressing and how smothering it is when you can't focus on anything because you are loaded with debt. I hate that. So I would love to see everybody come up out of that. So, so you say you don't know why the people are attracted and drawn to it, but you answered the question right there, right? I think that something that is lacking in the social media, the YouTube space, is authenticity, being genuine, uh, and someone leading first, first with service and care. Um, and so everything you do, even this conversation that we've had here today, um, whether you're giving credit to your husband and you're just glowing, talking about, oh, this is fantastic, right? Um, and that's the way we <laughs> started. Um, and, and so to see who you are, what you've been through, to just hear pieces of that, uh, and then to hear the excitement and this whole idea of faith and just knowing that it's bigger than you, why things happen, but also knowing that you're working towards something that's bigger than you so that um, there is excuse me, a legacy of Christy Van when she's not in a room. Right. I, I get excited when uh, I go through and I'm reading the comments on your videos and people are giving testimonials and right. some breakthroughs that they've experienced. Uh, and I know a lot of them you will never meet, right. right? But then we sit here and think about the generations that have been impacted because now I can be present with my family, not thinking about the bill or being in exactly. debt or creditors. Um, and so I just want to tell you from everyone, just from human beings, from those of us who are seeking to be better and enjoy this one life that we have, I want to tell you, thank you, um, that you are doing God's work. And now the one thing I do want to ask you, um, and this is coming from the position of a woman, female, as a believer, as a business owner, how do you deal with the detractors, those who are going to say, no, you can't do this. You shouldn't talk about faith in business. That's taboo. You shouldn't be a woman in a male dominated environment. Um, what is it that keeps Christy going? And the reason I'm asking you is because I know viewers and listeners are going to look at you and it's almost going to be like they're looking in the mirror, but they have not found that thing that's going to pull them through those tough decisions of possibly separating from family, friends, yeah. possibly being alone with your significant other and spouse, knowing that the two of you is enough. What, what, what do we say with you and God are a, a, a majority? Um, and so what is it, what would you share with us if we might find ourselves in those situations? Well, I heard Wayne Dyer say one day, if you knew who was standing beside of you, you would never have any fear. So when I think that right here with me now, the Holy Spirit sits, what do I have to fear? So when I hear about, you know, faith versus work, I don't care about that. They can shut down the YouTube channel if they want to. My God is going to supply for me. I don't care how it comes. I just know that as long as I am acting, in faith, he is going to react. He's going to take care of me. So when I hear people that get nervous about using faith, you know, or, you know, well, you don't want to turn the audience off. No, I want to turn them on to realize, help you realize that if you have the God factor in your life, you just multiplied your talents. You just multiplied anything you want to do before because he is going to make sure that you are well provided for. He's going to make sure that you're protected. So when we are afraid to move forward because of what somebody's going to say about us, we don't have faith because the faith is, is that we're the beginning. 
We are the head, not the tail. He is, he's going to take care of us. He's got our back. So, yes, you know, I, I've, I've had naysayers. I get that stuff. And you know what? It doesn't even bother me. It's because if you don't know that you don't know, then you just don't know. And it's like, you know, people that, you know, whether they are demeaning towards velocity banking or demeaning towards my person, I have people all the time calling me other people from the 70s and 80s. And they're like, you know, Princess Diana has come back to life and she's teaching us finances. <laughs> or, you know, I'll hear like, um, who was that um, uh, married with children? Is that what it was with the comedy show? And they'll say, Marcy, is that you? Yeah. <laughs> So everybody, you know, everybody has a personality and I enjoy it. I laugh with them. You know, they said well, somebody had written on one of my videos the other day and said anything that looks like it's from the 90s, I'm going to listen to. And so, you know, I bet there's a hundred comments underneath that one, them laughing and saying, I was thinking the same thing, but it's such good information, you know. So I laugh with them because I I'm not mad. I'm not mad. God's not mad. We're all just trying to do the best we can while we're here on earth. And the thing is, is that we have to keep in mind everything we do to someone else is affecting their outcome as well. So if we can help somebody else do a little bit better, then, you know, it's not just affecting them, it's their family, their children, their friends. So anything that we can serve uh, other people doing is going to help generationally. You know, if you're putting a good out there, now you can put bad out there too. But I think we have a responsibility to, you know, just help people to feel better because everybody's just so down and so you're struggling in one area or the other. And if I can help in finances to where they can focus on their children, because when my girls were little, I was so consumed with trying to make it paycheck to paycheck that I let their little lives grow up and missed a lot of it because I was out here working, trying to figure this or that out and being depressed or down, you know, and it, that, that still comes back to me because I'm like, if I can save one parent from feeling that of they're losing time with their kids, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do whatever I can do to help them. So I feel like that, you know, it's not fake. It's not, you know, I'm not out here to make a buck. Had no idea YouTube even paid. That was hilarious. <laughs> I had no idea that they did that. Uh, so I don't know. It was just like all of the money came, but I feel like that the serving and the giving came first. I know it did. Good stuff, ma'am. Well, yeah. Miss Christy Van, fantastic. I want to tell you that we are all better for you sharing with us today. And so I just want to say thank you again for your time, for your energy, but most importantly, thank you for who you are. Um, it is exciting. Well, thank you, but thank the Lord because he gives us the wisdom and that's exactly what I was praying for. So I thank him and it's my pleasure that he's allowed me to come out and to share this information. Thank you so much. And so I'm going to close this like I do every video and that is that we love you. God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. And until the next time we see you or you see us, don't be average, be world renowned. Peace. Bye.